Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dean Howard Gilman. Thank you. It is my pleasure to welcome you today to a truly historic event, celebrating an extraordinary demonstration of faith and confidence in the world of letters, arts, and sciences. Letters, Arts, and Sciences at USC, its 33 academic departments representing disciplines that span the humanities, the social sciences, and the sciences. It's 31 research centers and institutes working on such issues as early modern studies, hydrocarbons in the future of energy, Korean studies, humanities and ethics, environmental science, the dark energy biosphere, immigrant integration, emotion, creativity, and the brain, resistance to genocide, and so much more. Letters, Arts, and Sciences, a community of more than 10,000 students, 700 faculty, 600 staff. At every renowned institution of higher education, the foundational work of inquiry and discovery takes place within this community, within the disciplines of the humanities, social sciences, and sciences. We are the heart of the university. And for millennia, our world of scholarly inquiry and scientific discovery has been the driving force for human progress and enlightenment. To take seriously questions regarding the nature of the human condition, the goals of a well-lived life and the touchstones of morality and justice, one must engage the study of philosophy, literature, world culture, religion, psychology, linguistics, and classics to develop a perspective on how well or poorly our social and political structures promote the well-being of humanity one must understand history, sociology, economics, political science, and international relations. Before any practitioner can devise treatments for sickness or interventions to protect our environment, we must understand the natural order as revealed within astronomy, biology, chemistry, earth sciences, and physics. And before anyone imagined the transformative power of genomics, the mathematicians and logicians had to develop and elaborate the very notion of an algorithm. When Western civilization emerged from the Dark Ages and entered into an era of enlightenment, it was made possible by the resurgence of humanistic inquiry. It was made possible by the emergence of a belief that social orders were not natural but rather designed and could be evaluated. It was made possible by an evolving appreciation of the virtues of the scientific method. Our practices as a scholarly community allowed humanity to evolve from a condition of fear, superstition, and oppression toward wonder, knowledge, and freedom. To enter this world is to encounter the best that has ever been thought or created or discovered, and then to reflect on how these insights lead us to better understand our world and ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce a dedicated USC alumnus, a devoted supporter of our academic programs. Please welcome the chairman of the USC Board of Trustees, Mr. Ed Roski. Thank you, Howard. It's quite an introduction. Yeah. Good morning. Right now, all of us are sharing a transforming moment in USC's history. And like most historic occasions, this one is a connecting point where so many other histories, so many other stories converge. These stories stretch back to the very founding 
of the university in 1880. Back then, a dozen men and women laid the solid foundation. Right from the start, they built bedrock out of literature, history, art, philosophy, languages, science, and math. Right from the start, these subjects form the ideal of a well-rounded education, a humanistic education. They shape the ideal of the kind of learning that explores what it means to be human and to live together. Think of the faculty who over the course of 130 years have added stone upon stone to that foundation, expanding the disciplines, making new discoveries, deepening understanding. Think of the generation of students, thousands upon thousands, of students whose minds and spirits were sparked by their study of letters, arts, and sciences. All of these stories have brought us to this connecting point when the college stands so strong, when the college is the mighty force for change, changing individual lives, changing society, changing the world. And then there is also Dana and Dave Dorsett's story, which has also brought us to this present moment. Dana and Dave are people who understand that education is the key to human progress. They understand that although education does deliver personal rewards and personal growth, at the end of the day, education is not me, it is we. What matters is how you and how I use our knowledge for our community, our fellow humans, the world. Dana and Dave have devoted their lives and their means to expanding and advancing human knowledge. Today, their gift will not only help build USC College, it will help shape the leaders who will change the world. Their historic investment in USC will strengthen and inspire our faculty, our students, our alumni, and supporters so that new stories wonderful stories will be written. Speaking on behalf of the students of Letters, Arts, and Sciences, I'm pleased to present to you a fourth year graduate student pursuing a doctorate in sociology. She came to USC from Sri Lanka with a Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics and Statistics. This year, she received the Wallace Annenberg Graduate Endowment Fund in Humanities and Social Science. Currently, she's working on three research papers on the status of women and the well-being of children in developing countries. She hopes to become a consultant for the World Bank and the United Nations. Please join me in welcoming Radhika Jayasundara. I'm very pleased to be here today to speak to you on behalf of the students of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. First of all, let me thank Mr. and Mrs. Donsai for their tremendous generosity. The impact of this commitment is enormous. Thank you. When I was preparing for this speech, I was thinking back about my childhood, my years in school, in college and then at USC. And I realized there was a common factor that allowed me to move from one level of education to another, and that is free education. But free education is not really free because someone has to bear the cost of scholarships and other financial aid. When there are so many things that one can do with their wealth, your decision to invest in USC will not only help me to bear the cost of education, but will also support hiring new faculty, maintaining state-of-the-art labs, and drive cutting-edge research. Additionally, because of your generosity, 
students like me from developing countries who have very few resources are able to come to the US to pursue a higher education and live to our fullest potential. Now, for some people, education is a given. There is no question about finishing high school or going to college. But for many children, especially girls in developing countries, there are many barriers to get an education. Not only financial barriers, but also social and cultural barriers. So after completing my bachelor's degree in mathematics and statistics in Sri Lanka, I decided to pursue a graduate degree in social sciences because I reasoned I can use my statistical knowledge to study human populations. I was particularly interested in studying issues related to women in South Asia because many women do not have the opportunities that I have had in my life. So I applied for PhD programs in sociology in the US and a lot of programs didn't have enough funding for international students. But my advisor, Dr. Lynn Casper, and the sociology department of USC believed in me, and they gave me a research assistantship with a generous relocation grant, which allowed me to come to the United States. Women's studies is an important area in development, because unlike in Western countries, gender inequality in developing countries is a matter of survival. The main reason for discriminating against women is their relatively low status in society. And the best way to improve their social status is by giving them an education. Because educated women are more assertive and they have the ability to process information. As a result, they become better decision makers, better negotiators, and better workers. My research tries to substantiate these causal relationships with empirical evidence. And I also try to identify the mechanisms by which we can change these ideologies of these communities that discriminate against women. The support that I have received from USC has been enormous. USC has nurtured me both academically and personally. Coming from a different undergraduate institution, I didn't expect to feel so connected with the Trojan family. But to be honest, you cannot escape it. The faculty the faculty I work with, the administrative staff, have been so welcoming and so supportive that I know I will be a Trojan for life. So again, on behalf of all the students of Letters, Arts and Sciences, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Donsai for believing in the value of liberal arts education at USC. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Radhika. If you saw the full page ad announcing this milestone, um, we tried to make sure that everybody saw it. Um, you notice that we made it a point to try to highlight one of the college's most iconic and beautiful buildings. And while there are many to choose from, none was more appropriate than the historic Mud Hall of Philosophy. It was especially appropriate because Dave Dornsife has frequently remarked to me that this building brings back special memories of his time as an undergraduate student at USC. And so to speak on behalf of the faculty, we thought we would continue along this theme and turn to a distinguished colleague who also happens to be the director of the college's School of Philosophy. He is one of 23 USC faculty members to hold the title of distinguished professor. He has been recognized with the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences Fellowship, the John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation Fellowship, the Class of 1936 Bicentennial Preceptorship from Princeton University, a National Endowment for the Humanities Research Fellowship, and most recently, the honor of being named a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium Professor Scott Soames. Thank you, Howard, for that introduction, and thank you for asking me to speak today to express the gratitude of the 784 members of the faculty 
of the college, to Dana and David Dornsife for their magnificent gift. As most of you know, the Dornsifes have long been leaders in moving USC toward its goal of becoming a great research university. While their past gifts to brain science were visionary, their present gift to the college reflects an understanding that few can match. It is the college that is the heart of the university, combining the ancient disciplines of philosophy and mathematics with the great engines of modernity, the physical, biological, and social sciences, while embracing the study of language and literature, art and history, religion and culture, in short, everything that makes us human. The college is already a repository of the great traditions of Western civilization and a center for the study of all civilization. With the help of this generous gift, it has the opportunity to become one of the preeminent institutions in American higher education. In the past half century, American higher education has itself become preeminent in the world. The reason for this has not been good luck, but rather hard work, intelligent organization, strong leadership, and generous philanthropy. Gifts like the Dornside occur only in America because only in America do hundreds of major universities, public and private, relentlessly compete with one another for faculty, students, and other resources. After 28 years at Yale and Princeton, I moved to USC because I loved its vision, its commitment to the future, and above all, its fierce determination to advance. No one personifies that vision more than the Dornsives, and no one is more committed than we, the faculty, to making it a reality. Having made great progress, we still have a long way to go before we reach our goal. But reach it, we will, with the resources provided by the Dornsifes to back us and their shining example of generosity to inspire us. I promise on behalf of my colleagues, we will succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. I'm also pleased to report that the elected faculty council of Letters, Arts, and Sciences last week passed a resolution it acknowledged Dana and Dave's unparalleled commitment to the faculty, declared that this great gesture of trust will be an ongoing source of inspiration for the faculty to produce the finest scholarship and teaching and to create new work that will significantly improve society at home and around the world. And thank you for the Faculty Council for that proclamation. It is now my very great pleasure to introduce someone who has been a vital part of our academic community for nearly 20 years. Having served until recently as USC's chief academic officer, and before that, as dean of the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. An energetic leader, innovator, and scholar, he holds the Malcolm R. Curry Chair in Technology and the Humanities. 
USC's first endowed faculty position honoring accomplishments in both technology and the humanities. As provost, he created USC's Visions and Voices Initiative for Arts and Humanities Programming. And at the beginning of this current school year, he taught a micro-seminar for incoming freshmen on the roots of Western storytelling, Athenian drama, and the Antigone of Sophocles. Thus, in addition to his other university appointments, he has joined the distinguished ranks of the Faculty of Letters, Arts, and Sciences as a professor of classics. And so I ask you to join me in welcoming the 11th president of the University of Southern California, C.L. Max Nikias. Thank you, Howard. We're standing right here in front of Bovard, where USC's past presidents and board chairmen are honored. We are also right across from the plaque featuring Ambassador Annenberg, the only recipient of the university medallion. Dana and David, because you have honored this university with your extraordinary generosity, we would like to recognize you with your very own bronze plaque. Well, Ed, okay. let's unveil the plaque. Good morning. A thousand roads all lead to Rome. Like a thousand roads all lead to the Dorsife College from now on. I want to thank all of you for coming to campus and for what may be one of the greatest days of celebration in the history of our University of Southern California. USC has received the single largest gift in its more than 130 year history. This gift is for $200 million and it's an endowment naming gift for the USC College of Learners, Arts and Sciences. From this day forward, USC's college will forever be known as the Dana and David Dorsey College of Learned Arts and Sciences. Yeah. This is not only the largest naming gift in the history of our university, it is the largest naming gift in the history of American higher education for a college of learned arts and sciences. And this unprecedented gift makes a profound statement for the importance of the humanities, the social sciences, and the sciences in our society. The Don Seifes gift will act as a tremendous catalyst to accelerate the pace of U.S.'s momentum in our great journey to reach an undisputed elite status in the pantheon of world-class universities. This gift is so important because our college is the beating heart of the entire university. Given the importance of the College of Learned Arts and Sciences, and given the diversity of the disciplines that the college has, I'm not exaggerating when I say that the naming of the college is like naming a university. If you look around the nation, you will find other private universities, many of our private peers that are even smaller than our College of Letters, Arts and Sciences. Dana and David Dorsife have, in essence, named the core of our entire university. And they will stand there proudly as living legacies for current and future generations of faculty and students. There is a reason that the plaque you saw unveiled earlier has been placed at the grand entrance of Bovard. The plaque is there because of the centrality of the college. It is located there because of the central role the college plays in the academic and cultural life 
of this university. It is very fitting that Dana and David Dorsaif will be recognized in this place in, in perpetuity. Their generosity has placed them at the very center of our Trojan family. So allow me to read to you the text that can be found on the Dorsaif's bronze plaque. It reads, Dana and David Dorsaif, visionary benefactors, international humanitarians, devoted Trojans, tireless advocates of the humanities, social sciences, and sciences at the University of Southern California. USC Dana and David Dorsaif College of Learned Arts and Sciences, recipients of the University Medallion, March 23rd, 2011. <laughs> Dana and David Dorsaif are remarkable people. They are kind, compassionate, and very, very humble. Through all of their philanthropic efforts in Africa, or for cancer research, or for Alzheimer's, they are clearly people who care deeply about the value of education. And they are people who care passionately about helping humanity. Dave, I know that your parents, who are both Trojans, as we saw in the video, are looking down on us from above. And I have no doubt that right now, they are smiling. Now I would like to read a very, very special resolution. Dana and David, to demonstrate this university's profound gratitude for your tremendous generosity, the USC Board of Trustees has prepared a citation that we would like you to have. This beautiful citation right here on my left is truly a work of art. From the elegant calligraphy, to the intricate design, to the colorful painting, every aspect of this citation was handcrafted by a fabulous artist, especially for this celebration. And now, I would like to read the text of the resolution. Whereas the University of Southern California expresses its heartfelt appreciation and everlasting gratitude to visionary and benevolent philanthropists, Dana and David Dorsaif, whose monumental and magnanimous $200 million gift shines brightly as the largest single donation in the university's history, a gift that will forever transform the USC community and the landscape of higher education. And whereas the USC College of Learned Arts and Sciences will forever be known as the Dana and David Dorsaif College of Learned Arts and Sciences, Whereas the USC College of Learned Arts and Sciences will forever be known as the USC Dana and David Dorsaif College of Learned Arts and Sciences representing the academic heart of the university and anchoring U.S.'s commitment to the importance of scholarly inquiry across the vast spectrum of knowledge in order to cultivate and enrich the human mind and spirit, enhance knowledge and understanding, and address the most complex challenges facing our community and our world. And whereas a gift of this magnitude is unprecedented in the history of higher education because it represents a vigorous vote of confidence 
in the humanities and the social sciences as well as the sciences. And whereas the Dorsives have demonstrated their keen understanding of the fundamental importance of the groundbreaking work of world-class faculty to the perpetual advancement of U.S.'s research and academic enterprise through their generous support of essential endowed professorships. And whereas the Dana and David Dorsive Cognitive Neuroscience Imaging Center supplies leading USC scientists with state-of-the-art tools and cutting-edge technologies to help them uncover the underlying relationships between neural and mental phenomena, contributing to the development of re revolutionary new brain imaging techniques and providing greater insight into the mysterious mechanisms that guide and govern the universe of the mind. And whereas Dana and David Dorsaif have led an impassioned and noble quest to create innovative treatments and potential cures for diseases such as cancer and Alzheimer's, providing researchers with the important tools and the vital resources to transform the most feared disorders of our time into problems of the past. And whereas Dana and David Donsaif have worked to provide a fresh sense of hope, dignity, and life for cancer patients and their families, extending a hand to those patients who need special assistance in order to take advantage of the most promising new medical research. And whereas the Dorsaifs' tremendous compassion for people around the world has compelled them to support the vital drilling of wells, which are providing the gift of life-saving clean water to enhance the health and enrich the lives of more than one million people throughout Nigeria, Ghana, Mali, and Ethiopia. And whereas Dana and David Dorsaif have brought great honor and distinction to themselves and to the University of Southern California through their many international humanitarian efforts by supporting projects in literacy, agriculture, and microenterprise, transforming the lives of generations of people who will live proudly as examples of their exceptional legacy of generosity. And whereas David Dorsaif, having earned a bachelor's degree from the USC Marshall School of Business in 1965, has demonstrated his singular passion for and unwavering devotion to his beloved alma mater. And whereas Dana Dorsaif is widely revered for her immense talent and abundant expertise in creating elegant designs which weave futuristic technologies into the fabric of everyday life, seamlessly integrating advanced electronics into existing architecture, creating a harmony with technology that engages the senses and enlivens the mind. And whereas the Dorsaifs support and extraordinary contributions have earned them the deepest respect and admiration of the entire university community, meriting them the prestigious university medallion, which has been presented on only one other occasion in USC's 131 years history. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the University of Southern California honors the commitment and contributions of Dana and David Dorsaif to the well-being and continued vitality of the university and its mission, and proclaims its profound and enduring gratitude for their tremendous generosity. This is the citation.
Thank you. Thank you. Dana and David, we love this citation so much that uh, we're going to keep it for a while and give it to you later. <laughs> and now, it is my great privilege and distinct honor to invite Dana and David Dorsaif to the stage for a very special presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dana and David Dorsaif. <laughs> By a unanimous vote, the USC Board of Trustees has conferred upon you the University Medallion. This is a very special honor that has only been presented to one other person in USC's 131-year history. This majestic medallion is inscribed with your names and today's date. It is identical to the medallion of office worn by the president of the university. So at every commencement, only the three of us will be wearing the same medallion. It is now my profound privilege to invite Dana and David to the podium to say a few words. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, uh, this thing's heavy. Yeah. It's what you call serious bling. Yeah. <laughs> going to talk pretty short here. Over the years, really, through our connection with the neurosciences, we've had a relationship uh, with three <coughs> U USC college deans, and uh, uh, Howard being the third one, but two previous ones. This goes back quite a few years. We've now had a <coughs> relationship with three provosts. Each one of the provosts we became very close to and understood them. And now with Max, we've had a relationship with two presidents, again being very close to him. We, we feel that we've seen the continuity of a serious interest in these leaders of the, of the university towards making the college, and I guess we get to call it Dornside College now, but making the, the college a major part of student life here at USC. One of the questions that we've gotten from a lot of people since we made the gift and made it unrestricted is how could you do that? And, and, and I answer back, Dana answers back, it's real simple. We think we understand the people that uh, it, are going to administer the gift we got a lot of faith in him. And then <clears throat> subtly, when it's a good friend of mine, I say, uh, you know, they don't tell me how to put a steel building up. I don't tell them how to run a university. <laughs> so it's with true delight that 
uh, we stand here before you. We're honored. We were not aware of some of the fanfare. It's thrilling to have the band here. And thank you all for uh, joining us in this celebration. So there's been a lot of reference made to our associations with the neurosciences, um, but really over the years, Dave and I have had the pleasure of um, getting to know uh, the faculty amongst many of the disciplines with, within the college. Um, they are extraordinary faculty, uh, extraordinary administrators, but really what we've been touched by most is just the outstanding students that are here at the school. And really this is what, you know, the students are what this is all about. And um, <laughs> when we come down to university functions, we always stay at the Radisson. And, um, and everybody, you know, kind of says, why, why do you stay at the Radisson? And, <laughs> And it's because we love to be with the kids. We want to be where they are. And, um, you know, so they make us extraordinarily proud, whether we're at the Radisson or whether it's here on campus or, or whether it's out in the community. Um, and so, obviously, you know, we love USC. Um, we love the Trojan family and fight on. <laughs> Friends, colleagues, thank you so much for participating in this great historic event, and I hope we will all continue to celebrate together in Alumni Park in a tented picnic filled with joy on this great occasion. Thank you for being here, and fight on!